reading from early anointed house of prayer. And the very anointing of God is in full control. Amen. Yes. For those who have made it to their to the house today, amen. For those who are viewing by way of Facebook, we welcome you. Amen. Yes. We welcome you. Amen. God is good. His mercy and his grace yes, it is. endures forever. Yes, Amen. It is, it is something how, you know, people take for granted the mercy of God. And how people take for granted his grace. But I tell you, every time I get a chance in my everyday walk, and I, I meet people who are complaining about just everything almost, you know, and I just yes, I have to yes, remind them, yes. well, you know, you got to be grateful for just allow, God allowing you to wake up. Yes, you, know, yes. you know, some people woke up this morning and couldn't get up out their bed. Yes. You know, and some, some didn't. So we have a lot to be thankful for. God has blessed us and allowed us with another glorious yes, opportunity yes. to be found in his presence. And, and, and to be a witness for the Lord. Yes. To share the word of God with others that they might know the reality of serving the true and the living God. I mean, once you once you have tasted and seen, oh my God. Once you have tasted and seen how good the Lord is. Yes. How could you not want to be a witness for him? If, if, you've, been, if you've been in the gutter and you know what God has done in your life. Yeah. Amen. How can you not be able to share with others the yeah. reality of serving the true and living God? I tell you, we must understand that God did not just save us to sit around. That's right. God just didn't save us to just, you know, be friends one to another. He did that for us, but it is more than just about us. You know, we have to put out, the Bible says that we ought to die daily. Amen. That we might be used by God for the greater work. The greater work is to be able to pray and to, to fast and, and that God might manifest his will and his purpose in us and through us. Yes, that amen. others yes. might know that there is a reality. All right, Our lesson on tonight, the Holy Spirit empowers us to spread the gospel. Come on, man. Amen. The Holy Spirit empowers us to spread the gospel. Let that just marinate for a minute, as Pastor would say. Let that marinate for a minute. We, 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 he, he empowers us to spread the gospel. Yes, he does. Yes, yes. yes. He empowers us. We are not just saved and filled to sit around. All right. We are not just saved and filled to do nothing. We are saved and we are filled that God can use us, that we can get the message of the death, burial, and resurrection. It's a simple message. It's not a complicated message. It's not. It's not. It's not a hard message. But 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 but, but, but if we don't get out and spread it, so many people are going to face such hard times. You know, we we are dealing in, in in a time in life now where where people are falling away. Yes. But even though they're falling away, we have to do. We have to be even more aggressive at getting the message out. Amen. So let's look at our scriptures for the night. Acts 1 and 1. Acts 1, verses 4 through 8. Okay. And then we're going to go uh, down a little bit. 12 and 14. Amen. 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 Glory be to God. Let me yeah. hear with you. Amen. Amen. Anybody happy just to be in the house of the Lord just yeah. one more time? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Ain't God all right? Amen. Glory be to God. Acts 1 and verses 4 through 8. Amen. Acts 1, 4 through 8. And it reads, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, Jesus speaking, you have heard from me. Amen? Yes. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Amen? Therefore, when they had gone, come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons 
which the Father has put in his own authority. I would just stop there. For, I, would, I, would, I would pass for, huh? No. Okay, one and four. Okay, I want to stop at four. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Got a little carried away there. The word be so good. Yes. The yes. word be so good. You know, yes. when, you, when you're reading the word of God, when you're strengthened by the word of God, when you're filled with the word of God, and you can't get carried away. Amen. Four, and, and then he says here in verse seven, he said to them, it is not for your, you to know the times, I'm right, I'm right, to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in my, I wanted to stop there, that's what it was, I wanted to stop right there and just minister that a little bit. It is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. We need to, we need to, we need to grasp that for a minute because I think we worry about too, too much that we have no control over. Yeah. We don't have control over, over, over the times and seasons. Seasons and times are going to come and they're going to go. What we do have control over is what God has given us, and that is his power. Right. We, don't, we don't have the power over it, but we have the ability where we can, we can, we can, we can submit ourselves to that power, that we might be effective in the earth realm, that God might use us in, in days and times in which we live. Amen? We, we, we worry about too many things that we can't control. You know, I think too many people worry about the pandemic. Too many people worry about the price of gas. If God has blessed you with a vehicle, then why worry about the gas? All right. The gas belongs yeah. to God. Yeah. We, his children, the cattle on a thousand hill, the gold, the silver, it all belongs to God. Why are you worried about how much gas goes? As long as you got to, you can afford to buy gas and put in that car, why are you worried? Yeah. It can go up to whatever it want to be. I'm not worried. I can't worry about that. I can't control the price of gas. Hmm. But I can't control how much of gas I put in, uh, in my car. I'm not putting it in my car. I'm still blessed with legs to walk with. Yes, I'm still blessed. I still yeah. can get to where I need to go. Right. We're worried about the pandemic. We're worried about what's happening in the White House. Why should we worry about we, 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 we've done our part. We, felt we voted. We went to the ballot. We made our choices. And now who's in the White House going to do what they're going to do? Ain't no sense of us worrying about what they what, what, what we can't do nothing about none of that. What right. we can do though is, 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 is pray. Right. What we can do is pray. Yeah. And if you're gonna pray, stop worrying about what you can't control. God is in control. God has got the heart of the king in his hand. That's what the Bible teaches us. Right. Yes, the Holy Spirit empowers us to spread the gospel. Yes. Then he goes on to say in verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Amen. Amen. And then verse 12, they're in the upper room. Verses 12 through 14, he says, Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were, where they were saying, staying, where they were staying, Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, the zealot, and Judas, the son of James. Amen? And then verse 14 says, these all continue with one accord in prayer, in prayer, and supplication with the women, with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brothers. So they were on one accord, with one mind, with one purpose, and they were praying. Yeah. You see, we, we have to understand that prayer is the essential thing in waiting on God. When we, when we wait on God, um, let, me, let me just get into the lesson a little bit, then I can go a little further. The Bible meets life. We don't talk, we don't like to wait. Chalk it up to impatience, or maybe it's because we live in a world of instant gratification. But we want what we want when we want it. Two minutes waiting at the food drive through, through or the food drive through is too long. 60 seconds to heat up food in a microwave is too long. 15 seconds for a movie to stream 
to your TV is too long. We've gotten so impatient with life because of all the conveniences that has come upon us. Amen. We, 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 when was the last time you used the oven to warm food up with? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 the first thing we're going to do is jump to the microwave. When, well, how, how many times have you gone through the drive through and, and you made a decision to go there, and now you're in line, mad with everybody ahead of you? Because they're getting their, they're, 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 the people taking their time taking care of that guest. Let's be honest with you, we all been there. Because <laughs> I know I have. Impatient. You know, God is working on us, though. Then, 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 you know, even, even with the internet, you know, we, we, we're impatient with the internet. As fast, we got 5G now. We got 5G. Some places it, it, it is moving faster than it's ever moved before, but we're still impatient. We can't wait. We, 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 we're, we're a nation of impatient people. Amen? Hmm. But some things, though, are worth waiting for. And then and we, we're going to see in the lesson God, 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 God's word teaches us that we ought to wait. I think it's over in Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40. Let me see. 40 and, I think it's 40 and 20, 40 and 31. Isaiah 40 and 31, I think it is. Amen. God, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the prophet tells us to wait upon the Lord. Why? Why wait? Why wait? Why wait? It's important to wait. Learning to wait. Amen. They that wait upon the Lord. But those who wait on the Lord, why it's important to wait? Because it says, shall, you shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. In other words, you'll, if you learn to wait upon God, you won't fret. You won't worry. You won't, you won't allow yourself to get caught up into, the, into the, all of the things that, that the world is doing. Because when you know waiting on God, there's a benefit in waiting on God. Amen? Look at, look at um, John, I think it is. No, Psalm 27 and 14. Waiting on God. Waiting on God. Amen. Can somebody read that out for me? Psalm 27 and 14. 27 and 14. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. The psalmist is, 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 is agreeing with Isaiah that, and with the Holy Spirit. That we must learn to wait. There's many other scriptures that talk about waiting on God. We have become so impatient until we don't even we don't we don't we don't even want to flip through the pages of our Bibles anymore. Mm. We jumped to our phones immediately, like I just did, and still couldn't find it. You know, instead of being patient and flipping through the scriptures like we used to do and, and find what we need, we jump to those phones immediately because we have become impatient with everything, even with the word. We want it now. But you have to wait in order to get the word sometimes. Amen? Amen. You have to wait. God, God knows what you need when you need it. And he is never late. He's always on time. Amen? So, some things are worth waiting for. The fine craftsmanship that goes into a well-built house is worth waiting for. An all-day slow-roasted barbecue dinner is worth waiting for. Finding and marrying the love of your life, hallelujah, is worth waiting for. Amen. Amen. You know, a lot of people have given up on life. You know, I, I'm thankful to God that, that, that even now, you know, I'm planning and preparing to be married soon again. And a lot of people have given up on life because they were hurt in their life by somebody. And because they, 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 now, now they, everybody is, is no good. Everybody is, is, is not worth waiting for, you know. But that's not true. We just made bad decisions. And when we can understand we've made bad decisions, and, 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 and when we, we've been renewed in our minds and in our spirits and when our, in our hearts, we can, we can wait again. And, and when you learn to wait on God, God will always 
show up right on time with what you need. Amen. You can't give up on being happy in life. Too many people are unhappy because they've, they, they've not learned to be patient with God and, and taking it upon their own self and do life as they've chosen to do it their own way, you know? But God is a God who is, you have to learn to be patient with God. God never is late. He's always on time. At the end of his earthly ministry, Jesus told his disciples to wait. He was going to give them an incredible gift, the presence and power of his Holy Spirit. They couldn't have fully appreciated all that that meant, but they waited nonetheless. In other words, they were obedient and waited. You know, they, they were perplexed. They couldn't understand everything. God didn't, didn't, didn't show them everything on, on the spot, but they chose to be obedient and wait on God because they, 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 we, 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 we call it by faith and not by sight. But they were already living that, even before the New Testament. They were living by faith and not by sight. God, Jesus told them to wait, and they did what Jesus told them to do. They waited. They, were, they wanted to know what, when, where, and why. They wanted to maybe not wait, but they did anyhow. Because obedience, they, out of obedience, is always a blessing. So they couldn't have fully appreciated all that that meant, but they waited nonetheless. So when the Holy Spirit came, he empowered the disciples, all 12 of them, for a mission that was unstoppable. The, 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 the empowerment of the Holy Spirit that these apostles were going to receive. Now the Bible said it was the 12 apostles who were empowered, but there also was the women and the brothers of Jesus who was there. You see, we're talking about not only the disciples, the, 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 the apostles rather, but the, the, uh, the other disciples that were present. There were other disciples, and that's what we are. We are disciples of Christ. We have been empowered with the word of God, with the spirit of God, that we can know what we ought to do and how we ought to do. We should not be allowing ourselves to be uh, sitting around and lallygagging and while, while the world is coming out, we are going in the closet. You know, the world is coming out you know, you got the homosexuals coming out. You got the LGBs coming out. But the church is going into the church house. You know, we, 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 ought, to, we ought to be uh, 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 moving forward with the word of God. That's right. yeah. yeah, we can preach it within these walls. But everybody in these walls, we ought to at least by now have heard enough to tell somebody about Jesus. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, by now we ought to have heard something that have stirred our hearts that we would want our brother to be saved, our sister to be saved, our auntie to be saved, our uncle to be saved. Yeah, we, we should have been touched in our hearts by now to have a burden upon our hearts that others in the world would be saved. I'm talking about the least of them. Yeah, yeah, the people that we pass up every day, we don't even think about it. But God thinks about it. Yeah. God thinks about it. You know, we, 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 when was the last time we was on a, on, 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 on a, on, on a mission to go out to win the loss? When was the last time we, we got together a, a great evangelical movement to, remember there used to be the citywide revival? When was the last time you heard about a citywide revival? Huh? What is it? Why, why, why is it we unable to do the work that God has called us to do. We've been empowered. Because once you accept Jesus Christ in your life, you are already empowered. But the thing is, we are not filled. We are not filled. You see, we, you, in order to do the work, you have to be, not only, not only get saved and be, be filled, but you have to continually be filled. That is, you have to continually be in the work of God by, by, by Bible study, by, 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 by being around like-minded believers, who, are, who can encourage you and who you can encourage, amen? But we, we, we've fallen away from all that, you know? And, and, and the truth of the matter is, it, 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 the, the, I think it's in the 13th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians talking about love. 
You see, we, we do it a whole lot. We make a whole lot of noise. We make a whole lot of noise, but where is the love? Yeah. The Holy Spirit empowers us to spread the gospel. We, we, have to, we, have to, we have to be about the work of our Father. He says, he says here, he empowered the disciples for a mission that was unstoppable. From their single location, his mission spread across the world. And it continues today. His gifts was worth waiting for. The gift of the Holy Spirit, the being empowered, is worth waiting for. Now that we have been filled, now that we have received that gift, why are we not making moves like the first century church? They, 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 they was on one accord. They, they had one mind. They had one purpose. And they prayed. They prayed. They were serious about praying. They didn't, they didn't, they, they, they weren't no lay me down to sleep prayers. No, these were miracle power working prayers that, 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 that enabled people to get up from their sickness. Yeah, it was powerful prayers. It was, it was people believing for the unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, you know, we, we, want, we want God to do everything and God has already done everything. He has already done everything. But, but, but we are here in the earth realm, and we are the ones who have to do the work. The work, it's already done. But God wants to work in us that he can do the other work, which is to win souls for Christ. Yeah, yeah. The life of a Christian is not hard. It's impossible. Following Jesus means loving people, even people you hate. Yeah, even people you hate. And, 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 and I tell you, I had to learn that lesson continuously. Continuously. Because there, even on my job, you know, there was a guy who would constantly cause strife and mayhem and full of hate. But and, and at one point, we got into it all the time. But I had, to, I had to back down from that because I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. And so what I had to do, I had to learn to love him even though he couldn't love me. I had, to, I had to pray for him, and I continue to pray for him today. The situation, the scenario has changed. I see God moving and working in it, but because I, I made a decision that I'm not going to allow myself to, 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 to fall into the hands of the enemy by, by making me hate this brother. I'm going to love this brother. I'm going to love this brother. And, 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 and not only that, that that's, I, I can tell you about many situations like that, but it works is what I'm trying to tell you. When you love, it works because it's not your love. Right. It's been freely given to you. God has put his love in you for you to give away. Yeah. He freely gives you love. And it, 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 the love that he has given you is that you might give it away. Yeah, that you might give it away. And the more you give away, the more he loves on you, and the more you're able to love on others who even hate you. Amen? Right. You, 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 people can hate you, and you, and you, and, and, and they, they be smiling in your face, and you can see the hatred on them. But they can't attack you because you're so full of, full of love. You're full of God. You're full of the Holy Spirit. You're full of the power of God. And they want to say something bad to you, but their lips can't do it. Because God has got their lips fixed. They can't say what they want to say. But you can see it in their heart. God gives you the, the ability to see things. Amen? So, loving people, even people you hate. Doing the ethical thing at work, even if it means putting your career online. Sometimes you have to get to the point where you have to, if they're going to do what's not according to the will of God, or they'll put you in a position to be in an unethical situation, and you know what the word of God said, I'm going to do what the Word of God says, and if, if, if it means that I, I, I may have to lose my job, or I might have to be laid off a few days. I, I know one thing, the righteous have never been forsaken or seed never begging bread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to be willing to, thank you, brother, take a stand. You have, there has to be a line in the sand when it comes down to the Word of God and, and being a true believer in Christ, because you have been filled with the Spirit of God. And, 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 and see, it's Spreading the gospel is not always speaking the word of God. It's in living the life that people can see the spirit of God in you. Amen? 
then it's not always, you're not always standing at a pulpit or standing on a corner preaching. People want, people, people just need to see you living an ordinary Christian life. You know, when you could do wrong, you don't do wrong. When you could look, you, you might, you look. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, brothers? Amen. Amen. We all have been there. You know, you have to train yourself under the Spirit, because the Spirit of God is going to always give you an out. You have to learn to take the out instead of allowing yourself to get caught up, because you've been empowered to be a gospel messenger. We are ambassadors in Christ. We, we, we represent the King. We are not in kingdom class because we are non-representatives. We are here because we represent the King. Amen? We are here because we want to know what it is God would have us to know at a time such as this, that we might represent him well in the earth realm. Because the world is going to hell in the handbasket. No, it's not going to be better. But it's going to be better for us as we continue to look to God and walk in the spirit and lean not to our own understanding and acknowledge him in all of his ways that he would direct our path. Yeah, it's going to be better for us. But for the world, those who choose not to know Christ, it ain't going to get better for them. It's not. So, so don't, don't, don't listen to all that stuff. World peace and all that stuff. No, it, it's not here. It's not in the book. You don't find a world peace nowhere in this book. There won't be no world peace. There'll be judgment upon this world for the things that they are doing and, and continue to do and they know better, yet they, they do what they want to do. Yeah, they do what they want to do. God, God will judge the whole world. And it's going to begin with the church. We can't forget that. It's going to begin with the church. So it's loving people and doing ethical things at work, even if it means putting your career on life. And then this is a big one here. Forgiving people who don't deserve to be forgiven. Well, who doesn't deserve it? I don't deserve to be forgiven. I mean, I was just sharing with a young lady on today. She has a problem with another young lady. She, she, they were good friends at one point. And they got into a situation, and now they don't. One of them is, is ready to forgive. And the other one, she is full of strife and hatefulness and won't forgive. Tell, told, told me today, her mother knows the Bible better than me. And she told, and her mama told her, just forgive her and forget about it. I said, what scripture is that? <laughs> what, 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 your mama? I said, what about, do you know what the Bible says for yourself? You know? And I had to ask her, do you know what the Bible says for yourself about unforgiveness? Because I'm being, forgiving is big. How can we expect God to forgive us? The mess we are, and have been, and still can be, and, and, and still is, sis say. And how can we how can we expect God to forgive us? Because we know what we be thinking about during the daytime. Yeah, we, we know what we think about all, 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 sometimes when we ain't around other people. We know how we allow ourselves to slip into the darkness sometimes. But but God forgives us. God forgives us. And how who are we to to, to get so mad at another individual that we won't forgive them? It should not be said about the people of God that we are unforgiving. It should never, and then, then she had the audacity to tell me God knows her. I said, he certainly do. He certainly do. Oh yeah, he knows you. You know, so, so immediately I, I know what I had to do. I have to pray for her. And, and that's what we have to do with people like that. You just have to pray for them because their hearts are hard. They, 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 can't, they can't receive the things of God because they have not really truly accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Because once you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, you've got to change. There's got to be change in your life. There's got to be change in your activity, in your characteristics, in, in your integrity. There's got to be change. So forgiving, forgiving, forgiving is big with God. Yeah, I think, I think somewhere it says, um, how he says it, he puts it this way. If you don't forgive your brother and sister, how can I forgive you? Somewhere like that. I can't remember it right now. But, but in other words, if, you, if you're not willing to forgive, how can you expect God to forgive you? 
And he forgives us on a daily basis. You know, and, and, and of course, we all go through hurts and upsets and we've all been, 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 been lied on and talked about, but, 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 but just make it don't be true. Yeah, just, just don't let it be true about you, what they say. You know, it, it's, it's, it's a part of the, it's a part of the, it's a part of the journey, in other words, as a believer who is filled with the Spirit, who is empowered to go forth with the message of Jesus Christ. It's just a part of the territory, huh? Elder, it's a part of the territory. You're going to get talked about. If you don't want to get talked about, you might not want to get saved. Yeah. If you get saved, you're going to get talked about. You're going to get lied on. You're going to get stabbed in the back. You can expect that. Everybody ain't, ain't, ain't loving on you like that. You just got to accept that. Yeah. Because this, this, it's, it's not easy. But it's possible because of the Spirit of God that lives in us, who helps us, to guides us, and leads us through these treacherous times in which we're living in. So, forgiving people who don't deserve to be forgiven. The one who called us to this is impossible, to this impossible life never sugarcoated how difficult it would be. Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Let him deny himself. We have to really hear that tonight. You know, we, we're living in an a, a, a instant world where we got to have it right now. What about denying yourself? You know, we have to learn that denying ourselves is, is game with God. Yeah, and denying ourselves, that, that's game with God. Amen? It says here, if any man come to me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. How are you going to follow God if you, don't, if you don't have no word in you? You can be saved and, and don't be able to follow and not in a position to follow God. In other words, you're carnal. You're just, you just, you just going through the motion. You're just showing up on Sunday. That's all you're doing. Because you, you that's what you do. But you're not serious about winning souls. You're not serious about being in the presence of a divine God, a holy God. Because if you were serious about it, we'd have the, the house would be packed on a regular basis with people who are, who are, who are anointed in, 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 in the gifts and the talents that God has placed in us would be overwhelming us in the house. Yeah. The gifts and the talents would be overwhelming us if we were serious about serving God. We have too many carnal Christians that, that show up on Sunday. Now, now you, you probably say, well, you carnal too. Well, the Bible says you know them by their fruit. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying what the Bible says. You know them by their fruit. My dedication is to God. Not to this building, nor to the man of God. I'm, I'm, I'm dedicated to God. That's why I'm dedicated to the man of God. I'm not dedicated to the man of God uh, because, uh, because, of, because of who he is, because of who God is. Yeah, yeah. You, we, we have to understand that that's how the order, that's how the order goes. It's God. If you, if, you, if you really love God, you can't help but love the man of God. You can't help but love the woman of God if you love God. You can't help but serve them if you love God. Yeah, you, it, it's, it's impossible not to. You understand your role as a servant. Yeah, yeah. When you're filled with the Spirit of God, when you're filled with God's Spirit, you have no problem being considered a servant. Yeah, you don't have a problem being considered a servant. Denying yourself. Yeah, yeah. You don't have a problem with that. In the world, you shall have tribulation. We're going to have troubles in this world. We, we can't get around it. We have to face that. There's going to be trouble on every hand. But the thing about it is the way we handle it in God, in Christ, because we are filled with the Spirit of God, we're not going to panic. We'll handle it with the grace of God. We'll walk through it 
in the grace of God, we'll deal with tough times in God's grace, with, with, with the Holy Spirit guiding us, leading us, and teaching us what we ought to do, say, at any particular time. But, but, but you have to be in line with the Word of God. Too many people are offline in the body of Christ. They, they, they're going all, they're wibbly wobbly all over the place. You have to be in line with the word of God. It just says if you had a car that needed to be lined. I think you shared that last week, Elder. Well, how, during Sunday school you shared that. When you have a car and, and, and you, don't, you don't get in line every time and then, the thing is all over the place. All over the place. You have to stay in line with the word of God. You have to consistently be in this word. You have to be in this word day and night. You can't just pick up the Bible on Sunday and say you feel with the Spirit of God. No, you're not. You are not filled with the Spirit of God if you're just picking the Bible up on Sunday. Yeah, you have to pick this Bible up daily. That's what denying yourself, picking up your cross daily. And not only you have to pick up the Bible, read it, study it, be filled with the Spirit of God, you have to walk this walk. Yeah, you have, to, you have to live out the gospel. You have to, you, 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 you're going to go through trials and tribulations, and you'll be able to land on your feet, amen, because of the Spirit of God in you, who will continue to hold you up and keep you. Did you not remember God said in the commission, go ye into all the world? Then he, the last thing he says is, I'll be with you always. Either God is lying, or he's telling the truth. Oh, God is not lying. He said he'll be with me always. I believe that. Whatever things get shaky in my life, I'm remembering that. God said he's going to be with me. God said he's going to be with me. He's not going to leave me, nor going to save me. Yeah. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not below. I'm more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. But for any man being Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away and all things are called new again. Yeah, yeah. Lean not to your own understanding, but to acknowledge him in all of his ways. You've got to be filled with the word in order to get through these tr troubled times in which we are living in today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the world is coming out and the church is coming in. Yeah. We have to get out there with them. We have to mix it up with them. We have to fight a good fight of faith. Yeah. We have to believe what we say and do what God says we can do. The, the greater work is the praying church. That's the greater work. The greater work of the church that's praying and, and being able to be used by God in times like these. Amen. God be the glory. Jesus, the Son of God, never expected us to live this impossible life in our own power. Jesus himself lived his life on earth in union with and empowered by God, the Holy Spirit. That same Spirit is the secret to the power we need to live and follow Jesus. Living the Christian life is only possible with the power of the Holy Spirit living through us. So the question is, are you, are you really willing to, be, to allow the Spirit of God to live in you and through you? It can only be possible if you dedicate yourself to Him. Yeah, and dedicating yourself to Him, you have to deny yourself. You have to pick up your cross daily and follow Him. Yeah. You have to pick up your cross daily and follow Some, when you, when you, 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 this, this, is a, this, this, this is how you'll be able to tell. Your circle is going to become small. You have associates, but they ain't many, you won't be able to call many people your friend. Yeah. You have, you'll know a lot of people because of your, of, 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 because of the spirit of God in you. You attract a lot of people. You, a lot of people will want to know you, want to talk to you, want to be in your presence. But only a few people, God will let you see them as your friend. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The bottom line is, it's the power, the spirit, the Holy Spirit that empowers us to live the life that God has called us for at a time like this. Amen? God wants to live in us, and he wants to live through us. 
God just doesn't want to be in you and not use you. God want to be in you to be that you can be used for an effective tool in the in the in the, in the, in the, the Bible says that the, the fields are, are ripe and, and ready for harvest, but there's the, the but labor is a field. Why? Labor is a field. How can there be how can the laborers be filled? All the people that say they know Jesus. All the people that say, I'm a born again believer. How can the laborers be filled? How? If everybody that claimed the name of Jesus Christ is filled with the anointing and the Holy Ghost of God. How can that be so? How can that be so? Talking about the Holy Spirit empowers us to spread the gospel. Before Jesus' crucifixion, he prepared his disciples for the time he would soon leave the earth. He told them, in essence, he would send someone to be with them always. Wow. Always. Being filled with the Spirit, God said, earlier we said, God said he would never leave us nor forsake us. The Holy Spirit is in us now. The Holy Spirit presence is in this place right now. Yeah. He's here. He's here now. He would soon leave the earth, told them in essence he would send someone to be with them always. The Holy Spirit would dwell in them and us to comfort God and remind us of Jesus' words. Give us the right, Jesus' words, give us the right words to say and fill us with power. Let's look at John 14 and 16. Amen. What, what, what does the word say to us? To strengthen us, to empower us. It says, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you. Amen? That he may abide with you. The word shows similarities but diversities of operation and ministry. In other words, the Holy Spirit will, it is the one who activates the gifts that are in us. All of us have at least one gift. Some of us have more than one gift. But if you don't, if you don't, if you don't allow the Holy Spirit that's dwelling in you to be empowered by being filled on a daily basis, you'll never know what your gift is. You'll always be wondering, how come they have it? How come they always act like they're hearing from God? But I don't hear nothing. Well, you can't hear nothing if you don't tune into the Father. Do the, do the word of God, do prayer, do fasting. You can't. You have to be continuously filled with the word of God. Look what it says here. It says, and I will pray the Father. This is Jesus speaking now. And I, Jesus said, I will pray the Father. And he will give you another helper that he may abide with you. Yeah. That's what Jesus said. Look, 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 look what else he says here. Look at verse 21. He, he, he says, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. In other words, he will make himself known to you. He will make himself known to you if you keep his commandments. How do we know what the commandments are if we don't read the word of God? If we don't study the word of God, if we don't hear the word of God, because the Bible says faith cometh by hearing, but also, even on top of hearing it, we have to study to make sure that what we heard is right. We can't just hear what people say and not check it by the record. The record is clear. The record is right. Yeah, we have to check what people say by the word that we might know that we are in the will of God. Amen? Yeah. Look what he said. Let me read it again. He who has, who has my commandments and keeps them. In other words, you pick up your cross daily. You deny yourself. You go through persecutions daily. It is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. Yeah. He says, I will love him and manifest myself to him. In other words, God will reveal himself to, to you by way of the Holy Spirit. 
Because the Holy Spirit is God in the Spirit. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father right now, making an intercession for the prayers of us right now, for the saints. We are the saints. The Holy Spirit is on duty right now. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is the one who empowers us right now to help us to, to be in the presence of God right now. To, to reveal himself to those who truly love God and keep his commandments. Amen? Let's look at another scripture. Let's look at 15. 15 and 26 to 27. Amen? But when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. In other words, if somebody is talking about saying they're, they're preaching and they're not lifting up Jesus, they are lying. Because the spirit of God is going to always testify of himself. That's not my word. That's, that's the scripture right here. That's not me saying that. Look what it says again, 1526. But when the help will come, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify. Of who? What your Bible say? Me. Yeah, that's Jesus talking. It's in red letter. That's Jesus talking. So if people are talking about God and they, they ain't lifting up Jesus, Something wrong with that. But you ain't gonna know that if you're not in the Word. You ain't gonna know that if you're not, if you're not filled with the Spirit of God because you won't have antennas that, that detect stuff like that. You see, if you, when, you, when you feel with the Spirit of God, you feel with the power of God for the work of ministry, then you have ears to hear stuff like that. You'll be like, hold up. Something ain't right now. That brother is out of line. He, off pace here. Something ain't right with that. Because you he preached a whole sermon and never talked about Jesus. Didn't even go to the cross. Amen. But I, I'm not one who, who, who says you gotta go to the cross at the end, because I go to the cross throughout my whole sermon sometimes. I just believe you ought to stay on Jesus. Yeah. Because he's the one who keeps you. That's just my, my belief. And look at look at uh, 16, 7 to 15. And then we're going to move on. 16, 7 through 15. And it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But, I, but if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he come, he will come, he will convict Hear this now, and he, when he comes, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Well, do you, do you, do you see anywhere in there where it says the Holy Spirit is going to bring forth peace? <laughs> Amen? And it goes on, it says, of sin, because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness, because... I go to my Father, and you see me no more. And of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. Amen? The Holy Spirit, when you, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, God fills us to go forth and bring his message. He will always give us what we need to have in time of need, but we got to have something. And that is, we got to be filled up with the word. You see, the Holy Spirit just ain't going to speak in an empty vessel. An empty vessel can't nothing come out of an empty vessel. The vessel has to be filled. In order for the Holy Spirit to bring something out of it. Amen. We have a work to do. We are empowered to go forth and bring the message of Jesus Christ. But if we don't do the work, then they'll never know. 
that, that, that's on our hands. You know, there, there's so many young men that need to hear the gospel, who need to see some brother or some sister that's walking by the Spirit, that God can use you to be a mentor to a young brother. A lot, a lot, a lot of men, a lot of women have, have not been, have, have, have messed up in their lives, so to speak, coming up. And, and, and they fall away on, on their parenthood skills and all that stuff. But since they've been saved, God has, 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 has rounded them and made them right. And, and, and now they're filled, even though their family may not fully trust them, God has young men out there waiting and ready that you would go forth out there and, and speak to those young people. And, and, and help them and mentor them to, to, to know the reality of serving the true and the living God. You don't know who life you're going to change by just telling them Jesus loves you. That's enough right there. Yeah, that's enough to get their mind going. Who this Jesus is. And then once they want to know who the Jesus is, they're going to come back to you. And then you can explain the whole story to them. But if you never tell them that Jesus loves them, you know, we keep that love to ourselves. You know, we know Jesus love them, but they don't know Jesus love them. You see, that's, that's, that's how we get the message out. We, we can't be afraid of them young people. We was young too. We did some things too. They ain't no worse than we were. But we, 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 we've gotten saved and we've gotten sanctified and we've sat down and we're acting like they, they, they're so bad. They can't be reached. That's the devil is alive. They can be reached. If you can be reached, why they can't be reached? The devil have us fooled, thinking that we can't save our young people. The, 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 the juvenile justice system ain't going to help them. We have to help them. You know, if we don't do it, how is it going to get done? They waiting on us. They wait up. Everybody want to know what, 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 how we gonna how we gonna stem the crime. Well, the church got to get out there in the streets. That's how we gonna stem the crime. That's the only way we gonna stem the crime. It ain't gonna happen with us sitting up in here Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday. We have to make some time for the streets. That's where the, that's where the, that's where we got to go. We have to make some time for the streets. We make time for everything. We got Mother's Day coming. We got Father's Day coming. We got Church Sunday coming. We got this coming. But when we gonna take some time and go to the streets? We have to do that. Yeah, that's why we've been empowered. We've been empowered to spread the gospel. You, you, you already know that Jesus died for your sin. You already know Jesus died for your sin. You already know Jesus died for your sin. But they don't know. They may have heard it, but they don't fully understand it. We are the ones who are supposed to go forth as ambassadors of Christ, as witnesses for Christ, to help them to understand the truth of what they think they know. But then we got to know. And only way we can know is by this book. If, we are, if we're not studying this book, if we're not being trained in this book, if we're not uh, 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 being uh, 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 precept upon precept, line upon line, then, then, then we can't tell people what we don't know. We, we, we're shaking our boots out there. We're scared. But, but the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. Amen? When we, when we, can, when we can understand these things, when we can understand these things, we can understand why God empowered us. God empowered us that we might live the life that he has called us to for a time such as this. Amen. I pray that tonight you have heard something that has encouraged you, has strengthened you, has lifted you. Amen. There might be one tonight who don't know Jesus Christ in the pardon of his sin, even in Facebook land tonight. Maybe there's somebody who don't know Jesus Christ in the pardon of their sin and we want you to know tonight that we want to offer to you this Christ that we've been talking about all for this hour. We want you to know that Jesus Christ loves you, and we want you to know that all you have to do is accept him into your life, and the journey begins. The Holy Spirit will do the rest. 
Yeah, all you have to do is accept Jesus Christ and a part of your sins, amen? And the Holy Spirit will begin the journey in you to work in you and through you that you might be also used and available for God. Amen. Is there one in, in the house tonight who would accept Christ? Maybe there's one by way of Facebook. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you tonight. We honor you tonight for the word that has gone forth. We pray, God, that, God, someone has been touched tonight. We ask you, God, tonight, Lord, that that young man, that young woman, that husband, that wife, that family, Lord, that has tuned in tonight, God, we pray, God, that, God, something has been said to stir them up, Lord, that they might realize, Lord, the importance of being filled with your spirit, God, that they might, Lord, be hungering to be used by you, Lord, in a supernatural way, God. Oh, God, we pray for homes tonight. We pray, God, for the babies tonight. We pray, God, for our daughters and sons that are in the highways and byways tonight, God. Touch them tonight, God. Let them hear from somebody tonight that Jesus loves them. God, help tonight, God. By your power, Lord, move, Lord. We thank you now, Lord. Now, God, we ask, God, that you would touch our first lady, God, tonight. God, we trust in you now. We know, God, that you're able. We've seen you work time and time again. So, God, we're believing by the power of your spirit tonight that you would move, Lord, upon her life tonight. Touch the man of God as he stands with her and by her side. God, we pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to enter into the room, God, and do what you do. You are a miracle worker, God, and we thank you tonight. We thank you tonight. We give you all the glory, all the honor. We give you all the praise because you are our king, God. You're our king. And we honor you. We glorify you. We magnify you. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may want to give tonight. You can give by way of Giveify, Facebook. Amen. You can give by uh, the old-fashioned way of writing a check. 1337. 73. 1373. Sinistry. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So if anybody would like to give tonight, we would certainly appreciate the gift that you give. And know that the gift is being used for a worthy cause. Amen. God is doing a great work here at 1447 Center Street. Amen. God be the glory. Amen.